What is going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to connect to MySQL using type RM in Nest.js. So we are going to be uh, using type RM as our RM, but you can honestly do this with really any um, any RM, such as SQLize or Prisma if you, if you want. But type RM is pretty popular and I personally really like it a lot. So we're going to stick with type RM. And maybe in other videos, I'll show you guys how to do it with other uh, other database ORMs such as Prisma. And maybe we'll also do a tutorial MongoDB as well. One thing I would also uh, suggest is to definitely use an ORM. Uh, it's pretty standard to use ORMs, especially when it comes to production level applications. Uh, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, one is because you can focus more on actually interacting with your database uh, without having to worry about writing structured query language because uh, it provides an API where you can interact with and you can just focus more on writing the code that is relevant to your code base rather than structured query language. You're also less likely to get things such as SQL injections occurring because it takes care of sanitizing and preparing your statements for you. And it's just a lot more productive to use an ORM. Anyways, so we'll go ahead and install a couple of dependencies. So I'll go ahead and install the Nest.js type ORM package. So that's yarn add or npm i, and then we're gonna do at Nest.js slash type ORM. We're also going to need to install the type ORM package Okay, so these are two separate packages. One is a wrapper around type ORM and the other one is the actual type ORM package itself. And then we're gonna install the MySQL2 package. So this is a library that it's pretty much a driver that actually will allow you to connect to your database. Now, before we get started, uh, if I haven't mentioned already, definitely make sure that you have a MySQL server up and running. Uh, I have MySQL installed on my system, but you can honestly either install it or you can use a Docker container for it. All right, so we are pretty much done with installing our dependencies. That was pretty easy. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into the app.module.ts, okay? Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to import a module called type RM module. And this comes from the nest.js uh, slash type RM package. And this is why you need to install the uh, nest.js type RM package because it gives you that module that you can interact with to configure your connections. So we're going to call this for root method. And we're going to pass in an object, which is of type uh, type RM module options. So for the connection options, so since we're using MySQL, we're going to specify the type to be MySQL. Uh, so for example, you can see over here that uh, there's a bunch of different options that are available. So if you're using MongoDB with type RM, you can definitely do it as well. But I'll just type MySQL. And for the host, so this is going to be the uh, the host or the domain or the IP address of where your um, MySQL server is hosted. So we're going to connect to localhost. For the port, this is going to be a numeric value. So we're going to pass in the port. So the default port is going to be 3006. Uh, for the username, I'm just going to do test user because that's the name of my MySQL account. And then password, I'll just be test user123. And then database name. So I'll just call this a tutorial DB. Okay. And for entities, we're going to go ahead and just leave this in an empty array. And then synchronize, we'll set this true. Okay, so what am I doing so far? Is, well, from, from all the properties from type up to database, those are pretty straightforward. Um, database is just the name of the database, which we're going to have to create manually. Um, and when it comes to entities, so basically with type RM, so if you choose to use type RM, uh, basically there's a concept called entities and these entities are pretty much just classes that are annotated with the entity, um, decorator. And when it comes to entities, you can use entities to describe how your SQL tables will look like. And what happens is type RM will translate the table or it'll translate the entity from a class into an actual MySQL table. And there's a lot of things that we can do, uh, such as we can even uh, specify what the property name is in our code. And then on the database, they can actually save it as a different name. They save it as an actual different colony in the table. Um, and this is why ORMs are very powerful. Okay, uh, the synchronize allows you to uh, auto create the schemas. So, for example, if you have a new entity, it will be automatically created. And if you if you update things such as like the uh, the column names or 
uh, even if you change like the comp type, uh, MySQL or the ORM should actually synchronize that with the database. You want to set this to false in production mode because um, you can actually lose data if you set this to true in production mode. In production mode, you want to do something called migrations, which is where when you are modifying something with your table, like if you're changing the structure of your table, then you don't want to actually let synchronize take care of that. You want to actually create a migration to prevent any uh, data loss. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up a new terminal. Let's just do yarn start dev. And we should get an error because we don't have the database created. And that's fine. We can go ahead and create that. So it says unknown database, and that's completely okay. So I'll go ahead and um, just, uh, oops. Let me just go ahead and, I uh, didn't mean to do that. I meant to open up a new uh, PowerShell, but that's okay. So let's just go ahead and type create database, test user, or wait, not test user, tutorial DB. And we can just go ahead, and I'll leave this opening for now. So that way we can reference it. Let me actually do this. Let me just create a new one. Okay. So we should be able to connect successfully. If, if, if we won't connect successfully, we'll just throw an error. And there you go. You can see that it works just fine. And uh, we can see over here, if I do use Oriol DB, show tables. We have an empty set. There's no tables. But let's go ahead and create a table. So what we'll do is we'll go inside. I guess I'll create a new folder called type ORM. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just create a new file and I'll just call this user.ts. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and use the decorator called entity. And then we'll go ahead and export this class and I'll call this user. Now you also want to make sure uh, that you have emit decorator metadata as well as experimental decorators enabled in your TS config file. If you don't, uh, you're going to run into a compilation issue. Um, and this be and so, so you like to just make sure that you have those things enabled. Uh, by default with NestJS projects, it should be enabled by default because NestJS literally uses decorators for pretty much almost everything. But if you don't have this enabled, then you make sure you have it enabled. Okay, just wanted to mention that. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our user entity. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a primary key. So you can see how we don't even have to manually create the table. We can just uh, do that by uh, doing everything inside our entity class. So it's set up a primary key or a primary generated column and it will auto increment. We can just do at generated column and I'll just call this ID and I'll just set the type to be a number. And inside of the decorator, inside the parentheses, we can pass in an object and we can specify things to see type. So if you really need uh, larger integers or a larger numeric value, you can do things like big int. If you want to change the name, you can definitely do that as well. Maybe you want to follow your the old school or the the uh, like the common convention when it comes to naming your primary keys. So you want to do you want names such as like something like user ID uh, PK for primary key. If you want to do that, you can do that as well. But I'll just leave that as user ID. All right. So now that we have our uh, primary key or the primary column, let's go ahead and just create another column. So you can do that by using the column decorator that comes from the type or package. And we'll go ahead and just call this the username. And for the uh, password. We'll do the same as well. And we'll also do one for email address. And so with the column decorator, we can also provide our own options too. So if you don't like uh, the name of the username or, or how it's going to be named in the database, you can change that to whatever you want. In MySQL, I tend to prefer to stick with uh, snake case, similar to Python's case convention. In JavaScript uh, or TypeScript, it's preferred to use uh, camel case. But let's say, for example, if you have a field that is something like, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say column, and let's just call this, maybe if we didn't call it email, let's call it email address. Okay. And we can change how it's being shown in database. So the, so the column in database like this. 
Okay. Uh, we can also set other properties too. So if we allow it to be nullable, we can set it to be nullable. But obviously, I don't want it to be that way. And you can also set a default value too. So you can leave that as an empty string. So it's a good way to be more uh, robust. Uh, so let's do that. Okay, and then uh, we'll do that as well. So uh, nullable, false, default. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, I think we should have auto, should auto restart for us because we're in dev mode. Let me zoom out a little bit because I know it's like, getting a little bit, uh, it's getting a little bit cluttered. Okay, so we have our entity. Let's go inside our SQL database and let's do show tables and you'll see, uh, let's see what's going on. It seems like, oh, whoops, I forgot. So we need to actually import the entity into this entities array. I completely forgot about that. So what I like to do is inside my type RM folder, I like to create a file, an index.ts file. And this is basically just gonna be a file where I'm gonna import all of my uh, entities which is really just in the same directory or it belongs in the type on the directory. And what I like to do is I like to export the, I like to export the actual uh, entity itself. And I also like to create a variable called uh, entities and put all of my entities in there and then export that entities uh, and export the entities array itself. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just export Entities as a default export. Okay, so basically this allows me to import user independently. And if I want to import all the entities, I can do that as well. So for example, if I type user over here, you can see that it'll literally be imported from slash type RM, which is literally just reading it from this index.ts file. But if I wanted to import entities, okay, I can do it as well. Now keep in mind that this is uh, an array, so you can actually just remove the square brackets. Okay. And if you want to do a short hand one, you can also leave it like that too. Okay. So if I go into my SQL, you can see now we have the user in our database. And if I do describe user, you can see that uh, we have user underscore ID. That's the name of the column. Username, email, and password. Okay. And if I were to modify anything. So if I were to change, if I were to get rid of this name and uh, let's, get, let's get rid of email address, let's just get rid of name as well. If I were to uh, describe it again, you should see that it auto updates for us. And that's because we have synchronized to true. Okay. Uh, and if we were to modify anything else, such as uh, nullable, for example, so let's say if uh, the email address is nullable. There we go. So you can see that uh, before, uh, seems like seems like I was looking at the wrong one. So before we have null, no for the email for the email or not email. Uh, yeah, email. You can see that says null for null, and over here it says for email, it can be null. Okay. Uh, so that is pretty straightforward. So yeah, and that's pretty much how you connect to a database. So uh, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. In the next video, I'll show you guys how we can actually save items to the database. So I'll see you guys in that video. Peace out.